idea of a road die to us was absolutely insane. And in terms of the police department, we weren't interested at all. Road diets are a roadway design solution that are being used across the country and in New Jersey to create safer, more efficient, and more accommodating roads. Because most road diets are installed on existing pavement within the right-of-way, they can be a low-cost way for a community to achieve many goals, including providing greater multimodal safety and mobility, traffic calming, and enhance economic development. Usually with a road diet, you take a four-lane road and turn it into three automobile lanes. Road diets are really becoming standard practice across the country. There's 11 states that are using them regularly, and by the end of this year, we expect 26 states will have institutionalized them as a standard everyday practice whenever they're improving a road. In the last five years, 47 road diets have been undertaken on state, county, or local roads in New Jersey. Over 70% of this number have been constructed and are operational. New Jersey DOT supports creating road diets on our state system where appropriate. The very successful New Jersey Route 45 road diet in Woodbury was the first road diet on the state system. Going forward, we have 20 candidate locations and we'll be studying converting 10 into road diets over the next five years. Road diets aren't experimental. They're standard practice at this point. We see it manifest in different communities throughout the state, throughout the country, but it's really a local decision. It's really something that you have to work with your communities and find out how does it fit within the context of what you're trying to achieve and how does it manifests itself in the actual design. The U.S. Department of Transportation is in strong support of road diets because of the tremendous safety benefits. We found that a road diet can reduce crashes between 19 and 47 percent. And some studies show on some roadways it can reduce crashes by 70 percent. We've done five road diets in three different towns. We've experienced an average crash reduction rate of, let's say, between 20 to 30 percent. But more important than that, we found that our serious crashes have gone down from between 50 to 60 percent. Road diets improve safety in three ways. They reduce some very catastrophic crashes, such as T-bone crashes and head-on collisions. They provide more space on the roadway for vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians and people on bicycles. And they slightly slow down traffic. Because of the tremendous safety benefits of road diets, the Federal Highway Administration designated them as a proven safety countermeasure in 2012 and encouraged their use across the country. The road diet idea in Ocean City I thought was going to be a great idea for our uh, bicyclists, pedestrians, and anybody else who was going to use that roadway and share space. There was many benefits as uh, far as traffic safety is concerned. We thought that this was going to definitely help our accident volume go down. We thought it was going to increase our pedestrian safety by crossing the street to get to the beach or wherever else people wanted to get to. And obviously we knew the benefits for the bicyclists were going to be there as well. There were improvements that were made to the traffic signals, to the pedestrian crossing lanes. We bumped out the curbs and reduced the distances, put in countdown timers for pedestrians to be able to get across. You can see what you need to do without having to make 20 different decisions, regardless of whether you're a motorist or, or a pedestrian. With traffic calming, you know, there's an appearance that the queuing is a, a a lot longer that um, traffic is waiting. And I basically defy anybody to tell me, listen, time it before, you know, we had the road diet and the traffic calming compared to what has happened since we have changed. In fact, with the, the traffic calming, it's the same. They're not waiting as long as they thought that they were gonna wait. The road in its previous configuration had two lanes in either directions, and the, the speeds were at times 40, 45 miles an hour in a residential area. We were very concerned about and, and had so, sort of the same fears of uh, affecting that road negatively in terms of moving traffic, but we found very early on that the traffic moved very well and it became a much safer place for both bicycles and pedestrians. The concerns that we heard from the public had to do with some traffic jams that would occur on West Avenue approaching 34th Street, especially on the weekend movements of people checking in and checking out of the town. Uh, we, we basically saw it uh, 
information from our local engineer as well as the city engineer to kind of dispel those rumors and myths and, and, and get some education to make sure that wasn't going to be the case. It operates the same way it did before, but it is better respective of the surrounding land uses. We provide more opportunity for pedestrians to use the roadway, more opportunity for bicyclists to use the roadway. We are happy with the results of the road diet five years later. A road diet is an opportunity to bring life back to the street and create an environment where both business and people can thrive. Road diets can be a critical part of a community's economic development and downtown redevelopment strategy. I really think when communities adopt the road diets, the bike lanes, it really attracts people into your community. You know, we're a summertime resort. We need people in order for our businesses to thrive. Before the road diet, cars would just weave in and out of the lanes, just trying to get from point A to point B in the quickest way that they possibly could. Well, as a merchant, this isn't letting them see my business. This isn't even letting them think, oh, maybe I could get a haircut, because all they want to do is get out of town. This has made it 100% better of being able to cross the street and shop the whole town. People don't understand that you have to see the downtown in order to appreciate it. And having a whole entire throughway going through your community doesn't make that happen. A road diet's really a tool in the way that we approach complete streets and our complete streets guidelines. And that how we look at roadways, how we look at investments in growing our communities, addressing their concerns, whether it be economic development, safety, or even just better connections within their communities. Here in New Jersey, we live in a congested state with roads that need to move a lot of traffic. It may seem counterintuitive to think that the number of lanes can be reduced and yet still maintain proper traffic flow, but under the right conditions, this makes perfect sense. The simple reason why is that four-lane roads where through and local traffic is mixed don't have a steady flow of traffic. The left or inside lane is shared by higher speed through traffic and left turning vehicles that slow down and stop to make the turn. As a result, you don't have four lanes of traffic flow. While there are a number of factors to consider, road diets have been implemented on facilities whose average daily traffic range from 2,000 to 26,000, with most roads having an ADT below 20,000. One of the biggest issues on a four-lane road are left turns. When a vehicle is stopped to make a left turn, traffic can no longer flow in that lane and creates the possibility of rear-end collisions. Cars will weave to avoid stopped vehicles, which creates the possibility of sideswipe collisions. These situations create a more chaotic and unsafe environment. Four-lane roads also create issues for drivers desiring to enter the roadway. There are a lot more things that the driver has to consider, especially when making a left turn onto the road where you have to look for a gap over multiple lanes of traffic as opposed to just one. For bicyclists, the lack of a dedicated facility coupled with higher speed differentials in a chaotic roadway environment can create a very uncomfortable and unsafe condition. For pedestrians, crossing a four-lane road is much more dangerous and challenging because there's more distance to cover at a signal. At unsignalized crossings, the pedestrian needs to identify a gap across four lanes of traffic and there are multiple conflict points along the way. A road diet consisting of a single lane in each direction with a center turn lane creates a much more orderly environment for safe travel. Left turning vehicles have a safe place to wait before making a turn have only one lane to cross, and they're not impeding through traffic. This allows a steady flow of traffic in the travel lane and also eliminates the opportunities for weaving and crashes associated with a four-lane configuration. The added benefit of making it safer and more efficient for automobiles is that it also provides safer and more efficient travel for emergency vehicles by providing better sight distance, less lanes to cross, in a center turn lane that can be used to avoid traffic stopped in through lanes. Because of that condition, many locations have reported their road diets as having a positive effect on EMS response. And because of the extra space created within a road diet scenario, a bicycle lane or widened shoulder creates a safer environment for bicyclists, while pedestrians have a shorter crossing with less conflicts. Overall, it's a much safer environment.
sections of the Patterson Hamburg Turnpike where we still have a four lane roadway were very similar to what we have in Patterson Hamburg Turnpike. They were typically characterized by high levels of speed, different levels of weaving between the different turn lanes, and people stopping and holding up traffic because they're turning out of that left turn lane. And now with the road diet, it's a much more organized pattern of traffic. You have the turn lane where people know they'll be queuing up to turn. You have the through lane, which is very organized. You really don't have any options to move from that. And you also have the shoulders, which we didn't have before, which really provide an opportunity for bicyclists traveling the roadway and a buffer between the sidewalks and also the businesses that are coming on and off to the road. For many, many years, I would have to stand in front of council when this idea came up, and I'd have to explain to them what our concerns were for public safety and us. We, we really pride ourselves in our response time for calls for service. If we tried to enforce or move towards any alternative that we could, instead of going towards the road diet and traffic calming and pedestrian friendliness, we took the stance that we want to try and do this in terms of enforcement. And again, after, I would say eight, nine, 10 years, we decided that, listen, our enforcement's not working the way we hoped it did. And as the police chief, I don't want to stand in the way of progress. So as a last alternative, this came up and we decided that this is what we're going to do. So when the alternative is put out there and we've tried everything that we absolutely could do and it didn't work out, I can't stand in the way of that. Fast forward about a year, uh, the, the changes have occurred and we really haven't had a problem. You know, when we approached the county, it started off as a, a small group of advocates of, you know, th we think this is a good idea. What do you think? How can we work together and, and get this done? There were skepticism, though, from members of the council. There were people that had questions from the community. So it wasn't 100% buy-in right away. We spent quite a bit of time working with the DOT and their engineering consultants. Um, they did a model to show us what was predicted to occur. We made some tweaks to the original preliminary engineering design. We just got a lot of feedback in our public meetings in dealing with the council uh, and politicians in our town, the engineers. We just kept discussing it till we came up with something that we felt was workable. And really what gave us the confidence was it was just paint. We said, if it doesn't work, we'll scrape the paint off and start again. The education and outreach is very important because you've got to be able to convince the people of what you're proposing to do and how it's going to work. And I think we came up with a good compromise that everybody was willing to live with. There's a lot you know, that you put into it to determine the feasibility, but basically it comes down to traffic volumes and current delays associated with the roadway. A road diet is a proven safety countermeasure that can really provide multiple benefits to a community. There's a lot of literature and guidance on this concept, but moreover, there are numerous examples of successful road diets within the state and around the nation. We urge you to review multi-lane roads in your community and assess if they're a good candidate for a road diet. This was a solution to a major problem for us. Now we have a road that is accommodating pedestrians and bicyclists and the people who live on West Avenue. I would absolutely recommend a road diet to other communities. West Avenue has turned out to be quite a success and uh, you know, based upon that, we are looking at doing studies on other roadways within Cape May County and make it safer for uh, pedestrians and for bicyclists. We would definitely recommend a road diet to other communities, you know, if the circumstances allow for it. You just need to spend the time doing the planning and the engineering work and working through the concerns that people come up with. In the end, it will pay off. I would absolutely look into the option of road diet in any community that has some of these older infrastructure facilities, whether it's a four lane road or, or otherwise. It really gives you an opportunity to revisit what that roadway or what that facility should mean to that community.